uh, we have a difficult Pasha and um, difficult exchange to deal with, which we have to analyze, because till today, this exchange carries its weight on the Bnei Israel. What is it exactly? It's Tisha Bell. Till today, the sin of the Meraglim was never forgiven. It was only carried out through the generations. And in all the midst of, of this story, we have a very, very strong exchange with the exact same words. Tick for tap. Exact answer, whatever the Meraglim says, Yeshua and Kalev are going to say the opposite. And they're both going to hint tremendous, tremendous things. Because it's not understandable. How can you convince a whole nation? The Nitzvah with Tzadikim, you have a few Rishayim? Yeah, what, what's the purpose? What's the Midrash says? What's the Zoya says about the reason the Meraglim that were obviously not bad people but changed their mind and they turned to be Rishayim that are not going to deserve to come up with his amazing. This is a tremendous punishment. We're talking about Princes, or the prince of, 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 of tribes, they were the highest level, the biggest kdoilim, the biggest tzaddikim. What made them topple over the top and fall into the tehoim? Into, whenever we refer tehoim, we usually refer to gehinom. Tehoim is the last, tehoim rabbi is the last level, the seventh level of the gehinom. So, and they're going to fall forever, turn out to be even the neshama, they lost it, and they will, you know, in the afterlife, they will be mazikim. They will be bad spirits. Spirits, you know, I don't want to say fighting or punishing, but but bothering and, 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 and uh, hurting people. That's all they are about. How do you come up from that one extreme of the world to the other extreme? But my biggest question is, and this I will give you the answer. This you look at Rabbi Yechnan ben Gudgeda, when 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 um, Rabbi Gamliel, so what was talking in terror with with uh, Rabbi Yeshua ben Chanina. And he saw that he was a god. He says, I see that you are learned. And uh, Rabbi Shuman Hanina told him, if you would know uh, about Rabbi Yechner, you would see Rabbi Yechner ben Gudgeda and Rabbi, I think it was Rabbi Lazar ben Arach. I, I'm not sure about the second one. You know, it's a long time I've seen that Midrash. Uh, you would know what greatness, uh, how to spell greatness, put it that way. So when he came back, they were on a trip that time. They were uh, on the ocean, you know, on a, on a ship. When they came back to Israel, he called right away. He summoned, he was the Nazi of Israel, Rabbi Gambia. He summoned Rabbi Yechner ben Gudgeda and uh, Rabbi Raza ben Arach, and he told them, tell me about you, and he saw how poor they were. He said, I would like to appoint you, you know, in a position in in Amisra, in the high position, they said, we don't want any of it. And they left. So Rabban Gamliel thought, and he sent them back a message and said, when someone becomes great, becomes on a high position by the Bnei Israel, the true Bnei Israel, a true position, he does not get honored. He becomes a slave of the Bnei Israel. He has to serve them. And at that point, they accepted. By why I brought you this is because Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudgeda, you know, had the honesty. This is a Tanaim. They're so beautiful how they talk, how the, what we can learn from their words. 
he said, before when I was poor, you could not convince me to go take a position, a high position with honor. I didn't want it. Now that I have it, and someone's going to take it away from me, I would kill for it. This is the honesty of, of a Tana. Don't pretend to be the yeshivisha guy, you know. I'm not going to do nothing. You take my position away. It's Minash Shamayim. Rabbi Yochum and Gudgada said he would kill for it. Okay, so we understand a bit the Meraglim. Uh, the Zera says because the, as they enter Eret Yisrael, no one had to be appointed. You cannot have the same, um, for whatever reason, the same prince of the tribes as he was in Chutzal Aretz. So he was just about one year position they had since the Etias Mitzrayim, since we were in the second year. And they, you know, they had a good taste in their mouth. They didn't want to lose it. They decided we're not gonna, we're gonna tell them they can't get into Eretz Yisrael, so we're gonna stay. That's the answer without going into depth in the Zerah Kodesh. But my question is, the Bnei Israel, you're talking about 600,000 men. You're talking about 600,000 women that did not want to have any part with the ego. So they had their head anchored on the head. They had their children. Maybe below 20, but not you can't force people to be over on on, on and, and kefer beika, you know, throw everything through the window. We don't believe in nothing no more. Kodesh Baruch Hu said, I'm sorry. Who was Mitzrayim? The strongest nation. The only nation that through witchcraft were able to trap not only the Bnei Israel in Mitzrayim, but they were able to trap the Shechina itself. So the Shechina could not free the Bnei Israel. Only nation in the world. The, the power of the Mitzrayim was unequal by any nation. They were reigning all over earth. HaKadosh Baruch Hu took them out without one bullet, one sword, one spear, one arrow, nothing. On their own, they pushed out the Bnei Israel out of Mitzrayim. Not only they pushed them, they said, you can't stay one more moment here. That's the greatest of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They run away from Mitzrayim. They come to the Yam. They have the desert on both sides. The 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 ocean on their back. And all the best soldiers of Mitzrayim in their front. What HaKadosh Baruch Hu does? Split the ocean. Waters go up 300 mil. 300 kilometers. The walls of water so all the nations should see what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is doing. Nisrael go through the midstream drown. HaKadosh Baruch Hu put the, the, the on and off fire between the Nisrael and the midstream. This so. They arrive to to Sinai. They see HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They see the Shechina. They know there's no greater power than this. A few guys going to Eretz Yisrael and they start bashmutzing, they start saying, you know, bad-mouthing the, 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 the land of, of, of Eretz Yisrael, the land that HaKadosh Baruch Hu promised to Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and that they were looking forward and every one of the Bnei Yisrael falls in the trap. They're all going to cry. And that cry will cost millions of lives through ages. First World War started on Tisha B'Av. Second World War started on Tisha B'Av. And we know how many millions we have lost. Not to say that Inquisition started then also. In the Inquisition in 1242 also. In France also, you know, with the Balat Everything, when I say dozens of millions of Jews died 
for that mistake. How can you explain to me that a whole nation swallowed the bait and the hook without asking a question? There was no one there. There was only Yeshua and Caleb and they wanted to commit murder to kill them. Only them. And even Caleb had to go down in, 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 in uh, Marasa Machpelah to be saved. What's going on there? Moshe Rabbeinu had to add the youth that were taken away from Sarah, then where she was Sarai, into the... Sorry, you lost me? You're muted. Okay, I'm unmuted. So how can you have a whole entire nation, including now Caleb and Yehoshua, that are going to have a difficulty on that mitzvah that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us, which is Eretz Israel? What is it? Today, people dream to go to Eretz Israel. Why did we have to have such, you know, even to save, I said, Yeshua, you had to add him the youth from Sarai. That youth that went to complain to Hashem, why did you take me away from the tzaddikes? He says, don't worry, the Midrash says, I'll put you on the name of a tzaddik. Yehoshua. Without that youth, you see the Rashi, without that youth, Yeshua was fried. He was done. What was it so terrible in Israel? What did they see? Let's go into the Pasuk. So, let's put, I don't know if I'm going to have time to, to answer uh, to show the parallel, but I would like to show you the parallel, at least on the Psukim, even if I don't have time to go uh, fully in the answer of Yoshua and Caleb. So this is what the Meraglim, by Yitziu, Dibas, Haaretz, so the bad mouth, Asher, Taru, Oiso. I don't understand this language. Paru is a tayar. It's a visitor. When you go on vacation, you know, they didn't go on vacation to Israel. They went to spy. They went up, he sent them meraglim. Meraglims are spies. Paru oisa? El Bene Israel to the Bene Israel saying, Aaretz. The land, Asher of Anuba, that we went through it, lost or Oisa to visit it. Yeah, we just went through to visit it, you know. Now we're going to report to you how our vacations were and what did we find and the great picture of the safari and so forth and so forth. Eretz Oicheles Yeshveha He. It's a land that eats up its inhabitants. Why? Because Eoiv died that day, everybody went to uh, the Levi of Eoiv, and, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu did it, Rashi brings down Rashi, uh, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did it as a miracle, and they turned everything on its face, because everything has two sides, at least two sides, and they turn it around. So it's becoming gullible. But we, you know, we're not done with our questions. Eretz Ocheles Yeshvehahi. Vechalam, and all the people, Asherahinu Besoicha, again, Besoicha, da, da, da. It's a very interesting language. I could have written this two psukim in uh, a line and a half. Obviously, there's much more than uh, Mita'ai here. 
the Torah he is giving Remazim unbelievable what was the Kavana. Unbelievable. Once you're going to hear it, you're going to understand why Bnei Israel fell in the trap. So, Rashi explained there were people of sizes, meaning they were tall. Okay. Great. What? Do you have something against short people? The, 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 the. One time I have to give you uh, a share on the, the rich, the poor, the short, the big, the fat, the skinny. Why does this happen? And someone who's short in his life, would he be short in next life? Someone who's tall in this life, would he be tall in next life? Because supposedly you're keeping your, your same shape. Besides that, someone who's short in this life will be tall in the next. Someone who's tall in this life will be short in the next. Anyway, it's called, it's a shear on the Tzedem. It's a, um, it's a very interesting concept, but uh, we have to have uh, time to go into it and explain. And who chose that? Hashem decided for us or we chose that for ourselves? So from the very beginning, the concept of, of when the Neshama was created, what had, because this would calm a lot of people. If I had what he has, the other guys, oh no. You don't want what he has because you didn't want it. You made every choice. Once your eyes were open, you went, the Hashem told the Malach, take the Neshama, bring it to the, to the uh, storage rooms where all the Midas are and say, choose whatever you want. You want to be tall, you want to be good looking, you don't want to be good looking. So the Neshama looks at itself and took everything that would fit, you know, what it is, its strength and its weaknesses to leave this world. However, in the aftermath, it's not going to be like this. It's going to be just the opposite. So when someone says, I want to be, I wish I had his money, you have to know Chesed and Gvura are exactly at the same level. You have Chesed, Let's say you have 100% of chesed, then you have 100% of gvura. But at the, at the, at the lower, um, at a stage lower, you have netzach, it's also chesed. But against netzach, you have hoid. So netzach is also uh, 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 not mercy, it's goodness. Now, people say, they look up, if I had the chesed, I would be great because you're fighting across from you. You only have the hoid, the gvuris of the hoid and the difficulty, the hardship of the hoid. And you look at them and you say, if I would have the chesed, I would beat it. But remember, if you have the chesed, you go up. You have the gvura against. Nobody, nobody on earth, on this earth has the sun shining 24-7. No one. Wherever stage you are, you, if you're going up, you will have only more hardship to match the bounty you got. You cannot have a, 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 a sweet taste in the mouth. This is done with your brain, not with what I have, with the, you know your external possessions. This will not happen. External possessions will remain external and will not affect you. It's your mind that's going to change. It's a state of mind to say, I don't want any more. This is who I am. I have a lot of qualities. I have a lot of this. And I made my neshama, when it was created, made all these choices because it could foresee my whole entire life. And knowing my whole entire life, for me to deserve Olam Haba, that's what my Neshama decided, that's what's good for me. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu approved it, sealed it on the Neshama, boom, the Neshama came down. Just an important uh, parenthesis here.
It's hinted here, by the way. I'm not going to go into it, but it's hinted here. There. So I'm not out of subject. It's right here. Vesham Ra'inu in this pasuk. As Hanefilim. Look at this word. Look how it's written. The Nephilim means those who fell. Bnei Anak, the sons of the giant, the giant. Okay. Min Hanefilim. Look how it's written. Open your microphone. Someone tells me what changed in here. I I I, I want to have some nachas here so that people see. What changed between this and this? It's an extra yud. Very good. Who said that? Ricky. Huh? Ricky. I Jeff's, Jeff's sister. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. How can a pasuk forget a yud within four words? And one second. Over there, we saw the Nephilim, the sons of the, the, the because here, B'nai Israel capitulated. So we have to understand what argument they brought. Um, the they pushed the the, the meraglim. So they 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 saw the nephilim. The nephilim are giants. We will see. I'm just giving you the translation right now. The nephilim are giants. We're gonna explain. We're gonna go back to Bereshis right after this puzzle. Bnei Anak, sons of the giant. Fine. Min ha nephilim from the nephilim. These two words are really cannot be explained in this puzzle. Makes no sense. Do, do I translate them with the beginning with Anak? Do I translate them with the previous? And and and, and the orthograph is also challenging here. How did you change the orthograph here? Vanehi be'enenu kachagavim. But the Midrash says they were like Nemalim. The people were seeing there's, uh, there's ants on the trees that look like humans. But he says it's not ants. Chagavim is um, grasshoppers. What do you mean grasshoppers? What connection? But it's not finishing here. And so we were in their eyes. What did you ask question? Did you ask them how, how do we look like? Do I look like a grasshopper? Do I look like an ant? Do I look like a what? Here, a person can learn this psukim all his life. Here lies. The abysmal mistake that was done then, this here lies the, you know, I don't want to call it gullible because it's not gullible, but the, the, the below the belt attack and why the weakness, it, put it that way, expose the weakness of a person. And no matter how many times you can redo this, a person will fall for it. There is a weakness. Just to go quickly, because I see time flying, and I won't even get uh, to the beginning of my answers. Uh, now, it's not the whole Bene Israel. Let me give you a trick here. Whenever you see the word Adas, if I reorder the the letters, it goes das. Whenever you see this, you know the error of Rav is right there. Why? Because in value equals error of Rav. It's a trick. Every time you see this in the Pasuk, you know we're going to counter the error of Rav. So now we see already that Kalev and Yeshua are coming, you know, they're gearing a response to fight the dust, the mind that were poisoned, and the Erev Rav. Okay. Here we go. The same 
exact language that the other one used. Asher of Anuba Lasur Oisa. Asher of Anuba Lasur Oisa. But you guys also are lying now. I thought we had a good team here. We're talking about people that they, they, they say now they went to, 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 to visit as visitors. The land is extremely good. Fine. You could have told me one. Why are you adding me with a second one? You know, you, you try to counter an argument where it says that it's a bad land. There's great people, there's the, the giants, and so forth. Okay. Quickly now here. Im chafetz banu Hashem, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants from us, and behavi o isonu el aretz hazois, and we deserve that he brings us to that land, un son alanu, and he gives it to us, he brings us to the land and gives it to us. Interesting. So why would he bring us to the land? Not to give it to us. So let him not bring us to, to the land. Now, look at it, Asher, he, because this is a land, Zavas Chalav Udvash. I don't understand the correlation between the argument and the problem. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu bring us there, because, and give, sorry, and gives it to us, Then, because it is Zavas Chalav Udvash. Now, if you wanted to say this, you should have said it in the in the pasuk before. The land is great because it is it's flowing milk and honey. But in this pasuk, it has no place. I know I'm very technical today, but you're going to see what's coming up. But don't be married now, Kadosh Bochu, Veatem, Altiru, Es Amares, and you don't be afraid of the people of the land, Kilachmenuhem, because they are the, our bread. I'm not going to arrive to here, but if you would know the Sodis here, I'm going to try to make a Shal Shudas this Shabbos just to talk about this. Uh, it's beyond what the mind can take. Start silam me'alehem. If you remove silam, the shadow. Oh, you're talking about the tzelem eloikim. Well, goim have a tzelem. I didn't know that. So it's going to be a different subject. This. So what if you take away the tzelem from a person? If if he has muscles like this and he's uh, one one and a half miles tall. What is he going to help? Remove the shadow. Vashem itonu al tirom, akadosh bochuit with us. Don't be afraid. Doesn't help much when you have people with uh, families, you know, and uh, and they're worried about the children and everything. So how are we going to fight giants? Pirkei Rabbi Eliezer, let's get into it right away. Explains. Two lineage, the world had two lineage. One from Shes, the last son of Adam Arishain. And, and, and these are the normal people coming down from Shes. And from Cain and the Tzadikim, all from Shes, and the Cain, all the Rishain. <laughs> so the Meraglim were from Cain? What are you trying to tell me here? That's Rabbi Eliezer Agadol, the, the, the Rabbi of, uh, of Rabbi Akiva. The, Mirag uh, the, the people, by the time, I'm going to take a, a shortcut, but uh, what am I going to take off? All right, I'm going to tell you to you as a story. It'll be more digestible.
הקדוש ברוך הוא, so I'm going to mix up everything now, זוהר, מדרש, everything, and try to compact it, it's already half an hour gone, so if I want to come to the answers, I better rush. So I'm going to give you everything compacted. Cain was the son of the Nachash, was the son of the Sam, of the Satan. The Satan went with Chava. A little bit, few minutes later, Adam is going with Chava, but Chava gets pregnant from the Satan. We, we explained this, I don't know if you remember, in, in, my, in Bereshis, that has Shalom to say that there was a Maise. The poison that he put in her was the Lashon Hara, which is the biggest poison. So, anyway. Explaining the Zer as it is this week, and as it is in Pika the Rabbi Yezer, and as it is in the Midrashim. So, I'm going to take it, I'm not going to go out of subject in here, we have no time. The Pain, the Zoya says that his children were giants. You never heard that, right? So I'm telling you now. But you had another pair of giants. By the way, the Bnei Kain still exist? Where are they? You can turn on your microphone. There's seven layers on earth. Yes, the very ball that we live in. And through the ocean, there's an access to two of them which are inhabited with creatures. The Zerat speaks quite a bit about those. And in the Midrash, Shlomo Shlom Melech, you know, speaks about a, a, a human with two heads. And he was a Ben Kain. Ben Kain are recognizable because they have dual heads. They have two heads. They don't have only one. And they live on the third level, third crust. And two more, there's a different type of, um, in Kabbalah, the way when they, 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 they draw them, the mamash look like E.T., Mamish like it is. It's almost every time I'm amazed that this uh in Machshemam, this uh whatever the big park in Orlando, they they had a Jew that knew his midrashim because to come up with every their stories, what they made movies of is always midrashim and everything. But how did he get this? Is a Zoya, a clear Zoya in Parashas Vayikra. Tes Amud Bes, Yud Amud Aleph. And the story is brought down in Parshas Vayetze, I think it's Kufnun Tes, here off the top of my head. Uh, how is it possible? Anyway, the Bnei Kain exist, they live, and there's more people than different type of human than us on earth. Because when he did tshuva, Kodesh Bochu let him live, but under, not on top. Um, and it says in the Zohar, they have a sky, they have everything like we have. The only thing they don't have is wheat, but this is the reason. I don't want to go into this right now. Uh, just for those who, who, who followed the, the position of the, the Pentagon at Congress about the UFOs, the, one of the biggest questions they had, they could not explain the physics, is see a full speed one of these UFOs going right into the ocean. And I was smirking. And I said, you know what? It's, it's not my problem how they do it and where they are. Because this who knows he created the people. There are more people than... Uh, they're not. There's no civilization. In 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 uh, in the skies, none. But down in Earth, through the ocean, where it is, I don't know. But it is there. Uh, so going back here, so the bnei Kain are called the bnei ha'elokim. However, we have 
when HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to create the world, or would create the man, Adam, two Malachim approached and said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, don't create him. We create him. After he was created, half an hour later, he had already seen. They come back, these guys. We told you so. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to them, if I was to send you on earth, you would go, you would sin even faster than them and worse than him. This is, you see, they look at the current position and they project themselves that we would be able to be the same now and bring it to a different place. No. When you move places, you move challenges. You cannot say that that's why people make mistakes. If I would have the money of this guy, I would be wrong. This is the stupidest uh, 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 concept. If you had the money of this guy, you would not be out of your tunnel. You would just have, you will be in a deeper tunnel with more money. That's how it goes. The extremes are wider. Now, can you sustain a deeper darkness? You neshamatod? No. So don't take it. Don't envy. Look down. Be happy with what you have. So, these malachim, they say, you know what? We're going to go on earth, try us, and we're going to take your name to the next level and tell everybody that they thought they could be Abraham Avinu. Yes, when you are in the word of malachim where there's no satan, there's no nothing, you only have to do so, you have everything. You know, put a bachel in yeshiva. When he has the ambience and the thing, He's carried by this also. But once you go to work and you're facing the mitzvahs, don't steal. Be honest. Don't lie. Don't envy. Now you face the, the, the challenges. When you're in Kailo, it was uh, said by a tremendous organization, Big Rob in United Israel. He says people should go to work. It's a mitzvah to rise up. Because there's a lot of mitzvahs you can't fulfill that way. And you're ob obligated to find tricks which are not totally legal, put it that way, you know, in a clean language. But you would be out. You would be facing real problems. You would, you, your honesty will be challenged. Your inner qualities, your morals will be challenged. But this is what it says in the Aserah Sadibras, which you have to accomplish. So mentality is changing in this world right now. They're putting more people to work. No, no, no need to, to, to go to, you know, get to know the coffee room in every because you're basically destroying your Ilam Haba. Someone who has clearly made for, for people that learn and really want to be and everything. But uh, anyway, it's not I, I, that's not the discussion today. So these two malachim. Hashem said, I'm telling you, they don't trust Hashem. Can you believe this? They're in the world of goodness where there's no Satan, and, and, and they're putting down the word of Hashem. Hashem throw them down to this world. As soon as they land, so a Malach is made out of Esh and Ruach. Wind and fire. He's missing two components. Mayim and Afar. Water and earth, ground, dirt. And when they come through the world, so in Olam Haberia, you're starting having the neshama. It's very fine. It's the fire of the neshama. When you're going to Olam um, Ayetzira, you're starting having a ruach. And when you're going to Olam Asiya, you're going through the three worlds, you're starting having nefesh, ruach, neshama. When you land, the offer comes upon, and you have a goof. Exactly like when Elio and Navi appears in this world, he goes through every time the descent, and automatically 
a body covers him. However, it can only last for, it has to be less than seven days. Afterward, seven days you did a full cycle, you cannot remove the, the physicality from your spirituality. You cannot dissociate them. The, 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 the physicality kind of glued you and they can never go back up. As soon as they land, they open their eyes and they see the woman of the land. Explains the Zoya, explain the 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 the, the Pirkei Rabbi Eliezer, exactly the same thing. It was the Bnois Kain, the daughters of Kain, meaning the descendants of Kain, whatever generation we were up to, that the beauty was like the beauty of the light. And they used to walk in the street with their privacies. Let me put it that way, okay? And everyone can understand. I don't have to go further. Their private parts open. So the clothes were covering most of their, you know, of their body, but all the, 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 what they should be covered was uncovered. And right away, give them a, an electrical shock. And right away, on the instant they landed on the ground, they started sinning. Now, they were so strong, they knew Seamus and everything, so people were kind of uh, drawn to them, and uh, now they had COVID, they had everything, they were finished. They had children. One, one says, so... It's very interesting. Sometimes the name changed through the Zer and everything. It seems to be, I I, I, didn't, I, I don't have the answer for this. Sometimes we call them Shamchazai and Azai, Azai, Azai. Sometimes we call them Azai and Azai. You know, you know. There's a. Anyway, the story is Shamchazai having two children. These two children. How you? How do they do the the? In the marine, they go he ho, he ho. That that was the name of the of the two sons of Sam Fazai. They were eating hundred camels, hundred cows, or whatever, hundred other thing a day. And the, the Malach Matatron came to Sham Khazai and told him, Akalush Bokhu is gonna bring the Mabu. He, he was very, very sad. And he worried about his children. What they're going to eat if HaKadosh Baruch would destroy all the, the animals and everything. Why? Because he thought, like all the others of the Mabul, like the Midrash Springs, that when the Mabul is going to come down, we're so big, our palms are so big, we can close up the holes in Shemaim. They were so hot, so tall. And, and if it comes from the ground, their palms, the palm of their feet was so wide, they could close up the... the the Tehoim. Only thing they didn't know is the water that's going to come up from the ground would be boiling hot and they could not close it. But in C, you see the power they have. The Midrash said, you know, they, they bring the sponge from the ocean, you know, they had all kinds, they had it figured out. We don't, they, they don't, we don't need a sham, has a sham, they look like this. But, um, you know, we're not afraid. We can even if it takes out the sun, we had special stones and uh, that can shine and bring light like the stones. So these were these were malachim. They they became rotten to the core. One night, so that night where where the father heard the the malach telling him that this book was going to bring the mabul, his two sons have a dream. One has a dream that in a big stone, earth is like, is all written down on a stone and comes a malach and, and erases all earth. The other one had the dream that he was in an orchard, beautiful, beautiful trees, and malachim came there with axes and started destroying. So in the morning, they went to their father. Their father told them uh, that HaKadosh Baruch is bringing the marble and going to destroy everything. Started to cry, and the father, you know, consoled them by saying, People are going to remember your names because every time they're going to do an effort, they're going to say, Eo, Eo. Why they were consoled by this? 
I don't know. The point here is that Noach was saved with eight people in the Teva. And no more than eight. The Pasuk names the eight people. The rest die. So I like it, you telling me the two types of giants, the Beneha Eloikim, which are the sons of Cain, the Nephilim, it means from the one that was that fell from the sky, which is these two angels, the children were giants. Okay, I like the explanation. I like the fact that they were giants. I can understand, but they all died. Who are those who live in Eretz Israel? Oh, we have Oig Melech Yeah, this one was from, indeed, the grandson of one of the of the Malachim. Brought down in, in Toysis, uh, brought down in, 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 in the house of the Kenim Balea Toysis, brought down, in, you know, in, few, in the Midrash, in, 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 in Beresh Rabba, in, in, in the Midrash too. What happened? He Oigmele Chabashan was smart. He begged Noyach to let him. He, he was so tall he couldn't get into the Teva. So he wrapped himself around the Teva and Noyach made a hole so he can breathe inside the Teva. And um, but he made a condition with him that you'll never harm my children. And that's why Kadosh Baruch Hu said uh, to Moshe, Al Tira Oiso. Moshe was scared of the schusim of Oig Melech Abashan that was saved because the water of the Mabul was boiling hot. I don't care if, if, if you wrap yourself around. Okay, you're above the water, fine. But what about the boiling water? You don't, you don't get burned. So Isis said that Kadosh Baruch Hu made a miracle that the water, when they were coming towards the Teva, they were cooling off, they were cold. That's why, but Sichon, the Gemara Nida says, he was the brother of Agmed HaChabashan. So the Gemara in Zvachim brings the, the story of Agmed HaChabashan, how he got saved. But Sichon, we never heard of him. And these are the last two giants. So we don't understand where these giants are from. Oig Melech Abashan, we know lineage. Shamchazai Achia Oig. Fine. The Gemara says in Nida, Memalef, I think it is, um, that Sichon was the name. So, Midrash answers. I think it's the Midrash. I want to say is uh, let me see. Uh, yeah. No, it's Rabbi Nubachye. Rabbi Nubachye says. That right before the, the 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 wife of Ham entered the Mabul started, entered the Teva Shamchazai went with her, and she got pregnant of Sichon. That's why the Midrash says that the only one that had relation with his wife inside the Teva against the order of his father was Ham, because he wanted to cover for his wife. Because his wife, he was scared his wife is going to become pregnant. They're going to know about it because now it's a year. So she is going to. So Sichon was born in the Teva. And he was the brother of Oig from the father, not from the mother, but from the father. That's why Rab Nubach here. These children, these giants, not only they were giants, the Midrash has tremendous. I mean, in Yarkut Shimoni, let me give you a little story. The Yarkut Shimoni said they were giving birth the same day they got pregnant. 
six giants at the time. As soon as they were putting their feet on the ground, they were talking, thinking, and everything. During the day, says the, 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 the Midrash, the Yakut Shemoini, a woman would ask one of the sons to go downstairs to the kitchen to bring a knife to cut the umbilical cord. And if he would be at night, he would say, light up an air, go downstairs and bring me a knife. And the Midrash brings a story. One of them was going downstairs. It was just born and still attached with the umbilical cord. And he went down. And who he meets downstairs? The heads, the head of the Shadim. I don't want to say his name. And he wanted to attack him. But at that moment, the rooster started, whatever it's called, I don't know how it's called, to move, pop, 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 whatever. And, and so at that moment, they can do nothing to shade him. There's a, there's a thing with the, with the rooster. So the, the head of the shade him told him, go thank your mother. Uh, thank the rooster that, you know, he started now because otherwise I would have killed you. This, the baby, which was a baby, turned around and said, say, go to your grandmother and tell her that if it was not because I'm attached to the umbilical cord, I would have eaten you up. That's the power of these people. When they used to run from one side of the world to the other side, it was instantaneous. They, they, they could uproot. It says when, 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 when uh, lions were biting them, it was like a mosquito, a mosquito bite. So indeed, if you had people like this in Israel, I would understand that a normal father, a normal mother would be very scared, would be very concerned. How can we go to war? Because when Jews go to war, they have no sword. They have no uh, spear. They have nothing. We just run toward the enemy and HaKadosh Baruch who then sends the angels. But when you're talking about these people, you know, we, we just came out of Mitzrayim. We're still fresh. We're still one year. You know, nobody wants to have anything to do with these crazy giants that can take even Shadim not scared on the day they are born. But on the other hand, we don't understand. They all died in the Mabu. How can they still be there? How is it possible? At least they will have an argument, the Meraglim, if they, they were there. The truth is, yes, there were some Giants. But if you read the Psukim in Yeshua, the only ones that killed the giants, okay, besides Moshe Rabbeinu that killed Oig and Sichon, the two brothers. So that's why when he went to Sichon, he didn't need to uh, any uh, encouragement from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, don't be scared. He was, he was not scared. He was only scared because at one point Oig helped Avram. Even though he was with bad intention, but he helped Avram. So he was scared of that schus. But Oyeg, you have to understand that he came very angry to war. Why? Because his brother was killed by Moshe Rabbeinu. And um, with all this, Moshe Rabbeinu killed him. Who killed the others? Yoshua and Caleb exclusively. No one else. None of the Bnei Israel. Bnei Israel took care of the no regular people. But the, the, the those giants... Only, so yes, we had two giants remaining, Sichoin and Oig. Sichoin and Oig, they had children, they were not as tall, but they were tall. So they didn't know, they didn't have, as, as we were more and more remote from the, the original Malachim, Obviously, the power and the size, but still, they were giant. Goliath was uh, three point some meters, which is 
12 feet, 14 feet, 15 feet tall, and we call him a giant, you know, people were scared in the time of David Amelech. Think about someone that can darken the sun. Moshe Rabbeinu was 10 Amos. Moshe Rabbeinu was 10 feet, uh, no, 10 Amos, it's 6 feet, 60 feet. And he jumped 60 feet, and he only arrived to the ankle of just to tell you the size. So we have 120 feet is the ankle of That's the people. So now you know also for you, you understand that in that time, they were so horrible, the people, and doing all kinds of crazy things, even with animals and, and mix them up, that you know where all these dinosaurs and all these huge animals came from. The time of the Anakim, the time of the Nephilim. Now I don't know if they did it with Kishu, they didn't do it with Kishu, but this is this is a this this is at that time, and they all died with the Mabu. Don't don't believe that uh, you know there was uh, twelve million years or or, or or whatsoever. So now we're gonna go into the Psukim, and we're gonna see exactly what I told you in a story into the Psukim. And you're going to see that it's exactly what happened there. Nothing else, nothing less. This was their intention. We won't have time to go into the, the, the answer from uh, uh, Yeshua, which I expected. But at least you know, once you know where it's dark, you know where it's light. Once you know where it's light, you know exactly at the same level. On the opposite side, you have the other side. So from, from one, we're going to understand the other. Let's go into back to the Psukim. Um. So the first claim I didn't bring the pasuk Kichazak whom he menu. The Zoya says, you know who they claim they were stronger than him. Who is that him with a capital H? HaKadosh Baruch. They were claiming there was no way. And you're going to see the logic they put. It's tremendous. Today, we would fall for it. And this is how they started. Why is it stronger then I could just book because we saw, and I don't even like to say this. Uh, just for you to have it in a second, key. This equals to 293. I want to take you for a little ride here. We have the 10 spheres representing the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu, these are the, the attributes with which HaKadosh Baruch Hu rules the world. We have Bounty, goodness, whatever you want to call the side of the chesed, mercy in the middle, rachamim, and din on the left side. Chachma, chesed, netzach, which are the chasadim, are the strongest lights, are here. Say the meraglim, that even with those lights, you cannot beat those people. HaKadosh Baruch Hu to say that HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself came out. Obviously, there would be nothing left. He created the world. He can destroy it. However, those very attributes with which he rules the world have no power 
to win those guys. The Hasadim, why? It is so dark over there. The Din is so strong that it's unbeatable. Chachma Chesed Netzach. It's called, oh. Chachma Chesed Netzach. The three side of the Chasadim cannot. They are stronger than them. Okay, fine. Prove it to me. The whole idea, I'm going to crystallize it in two words. They say, we asked the question before. You came out of Mitzrayim. You see the mercy of Akadosh Bochu. You saw a goodness with the man and everything. They say, yeah, you're right. But that's the conduct of Akadosh Bochu outside of Eret Yisrael. Inside of Eret Yisrael, everything is toiv vara. White or black, there's no more gray. It's thin. You did good, you get your reward right away. You did bad, you pay right away. There's no more coming back, chuva, no chuva, do this, do that. Now, Nisra, look at the lives. We have made a few mistakes in the desert. Had Moshe Rabbeinu not prayed for us, we would have been done. But we can see the koyach of the tefillah that Kodesh Baruch always accepts. The Meraglim came and pictured them a brand new picture. Oh, my good friends, you have to know in Eretz Yisrael, all this won't exist. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave you the bounty of Eretz Yisrael. Now you better be good. And if you're not good, you're going to pay the price. That's the picture the, 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 the Meraglim painted. And we're going to find it through every. They said to them, Eretz Oicheles Yeshvehahi. Fucking language to, 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 if you want to describe me that it, people are dying there, you, 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 they, you could have said it's not a good land. There, there were many, you know, adjectives to be used for that. But Eretz, what is the Pasuk telling me here? This equals to 1,000. 87. Tough one for, for uh, a gematria. However, it's a combined I find. You think either on the physical world is going to be better or maybe on the spiritual world is going to be better. The dean will want to affect both worlds. The din will be lenient on one of them, so at least we can breathe somewhere. When we have our head on the water, we can bring it up and grasp a bit of air. This equals to goof and neshama with him seven times Elohim. Seven times Elohim. Meaning, if I go back to here, what they're saying, the Midas of Earth, the lower Earth, so HaKadosh Baruch Hu ruled the upper worlds with the first three Midas, Kese Chochma Bina. The low world with Chesed Gvurati Feres Netzach Hod, he says, Don't look for the name of Hashem anymore, Yudke Vavke, uh, that has mercy. Everything is full with the Loikim, the Din. Every Mida has Din. You cannot afford. So, what I have a, a human brain. I, the way I'm in front of a situation. Every situation has at least two outcomes. 
Should I do this? Should I do that? I'm a bit sick today. I can't go to show. You stayed home. All of a sudden, you're getting a beating. But then what, how do you know? How can you correct yourself? How can you have a learning curve? How to do the right thing? Everybody learns Shulchan Aruch? No. So how are you able to do it? You can't take a beating all the time because your lifespan is going to be extremely short. So th there's no life. That's why the Midrash said, Kaddish Bochu wanted to create the world with Din at the beginning. And he saw that he was not, a uh, world cannot uh, exist with Din. He destroyed it. And he created another one with Rachamim. So now they painted, they portrayed the Meraglim that Eretz Yisrael is given, yes, has a lot of values, a lot of good stuff. But on the other hand, you're losing, you're trading something. What? No more Rachmin. It's din. Everything din. But this Bnei Israel says, what did we trade? Mitzrayim for this? I'd rather be having the goof in in in, in, in uh, being enslaved, than being my mind and and my goof together lose everything, because here at least in Mitzrayim I would have oilam haba. Here I have neither oilam haze neither oilam haba. Nobody can pass the din. Nobody can come. If it was not because of the rachmi of Hakadosh Baruch nobody can pass for Shashan. None of us. Now, why is there a din? I'll show you why. Because the way the way they, they, they built it is so small. If you take the Sitra Akhra, we've done that before, equals with the Kailo, means with the plus one, with the, sorry, 481, equal Eretz Kenan. And we're not done with them. I mean, the four, the evil forces live there. You, it, this is a different realm over there. Over here in the Midbar, even in Mitzrayim, we had some evil forces, but not the 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 nest, not the nest of the of, of the snakes. There it is, and therefore, and they are the 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 road. The road of the Din is the Sitra Achra. That's why, so now the math start to make sense. And you're going to see how they're going to build it even further to a point where I say, hey, 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 we want no, 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 no part of it. So now that, that, they tell them, uh, A language that obviously the Pasuk say comes to reveal what was in their intention because they didn't go there as tourists. We all know that. So why do you say you tour? Okay, let's find out. This equals to 1,132 equals Two times some Hamavis. Some Hamavis is, um, how do you say, uh, poison? Why twice? Because it told them, in Eretz Kenan, this is the place where the male Nachash lives and the female Nachash lives which are the poison. And therefore, you know, this is what we're going to face on a daily base. We want them, we want to be all the time away from them, but by going into a straw, we're going to come into the nest. Which is true. And you see, these guys didn't build lies. They based themselves on truth. This is what was Eretz Kenan. 
the Shifchai Machshema, you know, the Risha was living there. The Sitra Achra was a place there. Ba'kadosh Bochu wiped them out of there. The two Samamaves were there. Yes. But they portray, you know, it's a little bit of truth and a lot of lies. So what he says here, the biggest problem I had was this Lasur Oiso. What the heck you come to tell me that you went on vacation to suffer? You know, we went to have fun. People were going to say, you know something? You guys were cowards. You talking out of anxiety. You were there. And you went in with your fears, so your judgment got biased. Tell them the miraculous, so they knew that going to be the argument of Yeshua and Caleb. That's why they started by saying, you know how we went there? Fearlessly. We went like, we're going on vacation. And we're telling you because of this. With our, our mind, because we were able to be very objective, because we really, you know, Bnei Israel look at their at their heads as fearless. You know, Hakadosh Baruch Hu help them. They win wars. Doesn't matter who. Look what this is um, equal to one thousand forty two, and I'm going to stop giving you, but. The riches of these people was so hard. I had I had to go into the nuts uh, and bolts today. K Y for the Kesser, heads for Chachma, Yud K Bav K. Heads for Chesed, heads for Netzach Hoid, Zebakois. Heads for the Yesoid, heads for the Malchus. Basically, all the names, Tziv Kois Hashem, that came out, that helped us in its rhyme, cannot do nothing for us. Then. The powerless, Chaz Vashon, to say that, Chaz Yochel, the powerless, in Eretz cannot. We are in the nest of the Nechashim. This is the turf. And this is what they hinted. The HaKadosh Bochum, was uh as we shown you know powerless there are you gonna tell me yeah but it makes no sense the Bnei Israel uh, the Bnei Israel knew better than this yes they knew but they came out with a different argument remember he says Anshe Mido is here Uh, no. And I want to finish on this because this is going to picture you. The, there's plenty more to say here. Anshe uh, Midois equals 811. 811 is mind blowing. Chesed, Netzach, Hoid, Yesoid, Malchus. Which one is missing? Missing two here. But otherwise, they have five meters for them. The good meters. In Eretz Yisrael, they told them, I for the people of the land. For us, it's Kavuras. For us, it's Dini. Going into Eretz Yisrael for us, it's a change. It's a change of life. It's going to be, everything going to be ruled by Dini. Nobody can live with it. What do I learn from this? I learned from this 
something philosophically extremely important on a daily basis. A person is at a stage and a place, latitude, longitude. Whatever is true here, don't project it to the next place and think it's true also there. No, you have a different data there. You have different environment, a different weather, different. So at that point, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu puts you here, enjoy, the, instead of looking what you're missing in this place, because you will be missing stuff in this place. Otherwise, the Midrash says you would not dive in. So it's a toive that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does. So since you're going to be at this place, this is what your neshama from the beginning said, knowing all your life, your strength and your weaknesses and your afterlife, which is the most important, he decided with that knowledge that for my own good, this is what I should have as a body. So the body covers, we can't see the future. You have to be a mime. You have to trust because everything you have in your life, you chose it personally. And knowing on the other side, when we're going to go to the other side and look backward, you're going to say, yeah, that was the best thing that could have happened. Nothing else could would have been better. That's why people that change to our ears and think, a person that doesn't look out of his Obama is, does, is not interested by the other guy has or doesn't have. He doesn't care if he has the best car. doesn't even talk about it. doesn't even cross his mouth, his lips. That person can be saved from the miracle. People tell you over there we have and we have. Hashem makes tomorrow. Me, I'm in today. And I totally refuse to be in tomorrow. Tomorrow is anxiety. Today is happiness. Simcha is in the moment, but not aftermath. You cannot plan to have simcha tomorrow or aftermath. It doesn't happen that way. Simcha is here and now, where I am. Over there tomorrow, I don't know what it's made of tomorrow. This I leave it up to Hashem. Amen. <laughs>